People will come by and say, all right, all right, what are you doing? And they'll go, who's that? I don't get a clue. I get it all the time. All right, big man, how are you doing, big man? I'm like, I don't even know who these people are. They know me as big man, but big man's not my name. Gary belies his appearance. Gary's very open-minded. People would look at Gary and think, aye, big lad, aye, I like heavy rock, not with that. Hello everybody and welcome to Pirate Glasgow. So today I'm going to take you back to my history. Tune in, have fun and enjoy. Cheers. My name's uh, Gary, uh, Gary Patrick Mullen, born in Glasgow and I've lived here now for 50 years. The feeling for me getting inside a studio and making music is just fantastic. It's just changed my kind of, gave me a different reflex in my life that's kind of inspired me to keep going and wanting to learn more. I've always wanted to do it. I don't know if it's maybe just me as a person. I'm quite a in-your-face type of person. I'm a big guy, I've got a big personality. I always want to go out and enjoy myself. When it came around, obviously, my birthday this year, my 50th birthday, I went to the studios, I had a look at it, and it just looked gobbledygook to me. And as more as I went, I actually so enjoyed it. For me, the feeling inside that, that DJ booth is just absolutely mind-blowing. It's just every single time I come home after doing it, my wife goes, oh, so how is that? And I've got a smile like this. And I go, I really, really enjoyed myself. And that was really, really good. And every single time I go, I go, that was better than the last time. All right, over we go. So we're at the top. This is Buchanan Street. If you're standing on the stairs up here, you'll be able to see these beautiful kind of purple slogans. And it says, people make Glasgow. And that's kind of the story of what we are in Glasgow. It's the people that make the city. <laughs> I've been pals with my mates for years and years and years, right? Getting my mates along, and even though I've never ever done that thing, to me it's like a feeling of what guys talk about when they're in the band and they go and have a jamming session. I knew Gary liked the dance music, you know, from, from growing up, from the times when we went on holiday together to Ibiza and that. I know he had a passion for it, you know. We've done all the dancing from late 80s to early 90s. We still went through the scene in Glasgow, so we've done all the rave music, you know, and the happy faces and the acid culture and dropping pills. And we were dropping pills, but... You know I mean? well, we were only dropping pills. In fact, that was one of the very few things. We never ever actually did drugs. We were always just alcohol. The music scene was changing, you know, from 85 to, to 99. The dance music started to pop up. And the rave scene, I think, just brought a completely different culture. It's just people just dancing. It doesn't matter what they do. They just move their arms and legs, and that was them dancing. It was new, it was something totally different. You had music that went from house to techno to trance. The roof in a nightclub and the floor were soaking wet. It was just pure sweat because folk used to dance, used to go crazy. It was exciting to be in clubs at that time. That era of music will never die. Can I think where it is? God, take me back my time now. I think I'm that far down. I'm sure it's that. I'm sure that's where it used to be. This is Tin Pan Alley. Brilliant place. Music was brilliant. And I think it opened in 1989, and it was the start of techno music in Glasgow. Probably your best techno music was found in this club. I had my joint 19th birthday party in there, and it was brilliant. It was a Tuesday night as well, and to see this kind of fast beat where we'd been used to playing house, and a bit of acid house. Let's go and see Archie's, the best f***ing nightclub. We went to the Archie's probably mostly every Saturday night because it was always where the bear DJs went. To. The way I'm going to take you in is where I would have walked to it. It's right under the main railway station in Glasgow. Any other time we'd be coming in for a big gig, the queue would be right round this corner. 
So as soon as you come round that corner, you would hear the noise from this, and then place would be absolute buzzing. You know what it's like when a top DJ is playing? You've got this momentum of like, I can't wait to go in and see this. You're coming here, you're right in the corner. You're literally only like 100, 200 yards from the front door. You can start to hear the music. It's pumping out through the front doors. As you're coming along, it's quite light and free. And then as soon as you hit under the bridge, it becomes this kind of dark and musky. And for me, it just symbolised everything about Glasgow. It's this, the dark side of Glasgow, underneath the tunnels, and you just can feel it. And the buzz, the music, went, you can hear the noise of the trains coming over above you. It's like a beat of the music as the railway tracks are coming over. You think to yourself, I'm nearly at the door, I'm nearly at the door, I'm nearly at the door. And then, bang, here the Archies. Best nightclub in Glasgow. The nights I had in there, Roger Sanchez was mind blowing. 1995, I saw Paul Van Dyke in there. It had its own personality. Nothing quite matches that whole atmosphere, that whole kind of underground scene that, that I used to provide. And I do miss it. I do miss it a lot. In some sort of ways, I'm a wee bit older. I don't do clubbing as much anymore. I do more of the chill out and relax and let the big DJs play in front of us. What's been good about basically taking this journey going back to DJing is that at any point I could drop in a song for 1988 in there, it gave me an opportunity to go back to my youth and go back to like when I was 18, 19 and remember the songs that made me to enjoy music. So this is the most longest pub that I've ever, ever, ever drank in. I've been in here for 25 years. Nicky Stewart, my pub, had it now for 28 years it is now. So I've been here quite a wee while. The pub is bottom line, a music pub. Massive amount of big bands I've played in here. Glasgow bands, local bands, French bands, Italian bands, American bloody bands, New York bands, a lot. This pub's got character. And majority of the people that come to it have been coming to it for years. I get it all the time, all right, big man, how you doing, big man? I'm like, don't even know who these people are. They know me as Big Man, but Big Man's not my name. But what's really engrossing about this pub is, you know, the music surrounds it, but also the fact that it's a Celtic pub. You wouldn't see this as a Celtic pub, but see when it comes match the end here, this place is jumping. Coming away from the match after it yeah. is, is a very good experience because you're sitting your pals again, you're celebrating, Nick's got the music on, Places is ram jammed, you're feeling euphoric. You will find like Celtic and music go hand in hand. When we go to the games, we sing. From the first minute to the last minute, you're singing a new song. We got Abada, he's on the wing. We got Kiago doing his thing. And what did we get? Follow the Celtic all over the world. Follow the all. Want to support a college. In essence, you're a slightly small, isolated nation in the northwest of Scotland. I kind of like we're the underdogs, you know, because the underdogs are the ones that will always be there fighting to the end, kind of thing. If Gary came in here, it's a big gentleman, got on very well from, right from the word go. I don't know why, but we just did. Gary belies his appearance. Gary's very open minded. People would look at Gary and think, aye, ah, big lad. I ah, like heavy rock and that with that. I'm not saying Gary likes everything, but he's willing to give everything a go, and that's very much what we want in here. We are probably not seeing as this. this is actually Gary, you know, this is everyday Gary. Gary is a fun guy. I live at that kind of high tempo. I'm sitting in the house and I'm in the car and the music playing, and I can hear the beat coming, I'm building myself up for it in the car. And as soon as it comes up, the radio's up full in the car, you know, my wife's going, spin that music now, but I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not allowed to become the next top DJ in the world. Actually, the journey that I've took in the last 10 weeks, I really, really enjoyed the journey. I'm doing it for the fact that I enjoy it. It gets me away from an escapism when you've been at work all week and you're a bit tired and a bit stressed. The buzz and the excitement that I'm getting from what I'm actually doing and the feeling of trying to get better. 
is enough for me at the moment. You know, I, I, I agree that there's so much more I've still got to learn.